Hey everybody, Tyler with Meeple Mountain here with another board game review. Today the name of the game is Chai, and I'm excited to show you this piece by Steeped Games uh, that Dan and Connie Casimir, friends of mine, have designed. It's a great game. We've got a deluxe copy here with all kinds of blinged out bits and pieces, and I'm excited to show you uh, this tea brewing competitive game or cooperative game for one to five players. So let's dive in and learn how to play. Chai is a tea brewing game for one to five players that sets you in the role of a tea house shop owner as you and your either partners or opponents set out to meet the orders that uh, tea customers will bring to you. They're going to need lots of different things uh, from ingredients from the pantry, something that uh, needs lots of sugar or vanilla or things with lots of flavors that you'll need to collect from the market to make them happy. Uh, you'll be playing over the course of five rounds tracked on this really fun little thermometer here as you set out to fulfill order after order, collecting tips that are placed in these really fun little uh, chunky cups here to collect your uh, ingredients, all to meet orders and collect the victory points printed on the cups below. Now, you'll have to move quickly as you and, again, your partners or opponents will be setting out to fulfill the most orders as fast as they can. Uh, every round is going to be set with these three cups with three tip jars uh, looking to collect orders. And after all three of these tips have been collected in a round, you'll move to the next round. So there will always be a, a kind of a rush to get through these orders. There's going to be a number of orders equal to the number in play. So we see here we have three players and we'll have three cups out here in play. So every round will be three orders. After the fifth round of the game, you'll tally up the number of victory points that you have collected on the orders that you have fulfilled, as well as perhaps some very scoring options for particular amounts of orders in any one given cup, uh, or even losing some points maybe for orders that were reserved in your tea house that you did not fulfill, but those are just variant extra rules. But we'll talk about the main stuff for, for this demo here. And so we can see that you're going to be collecting points based on the difficulty or amount of ingredients required on an order, and you'll see that there are colors that correspond to the player colors in the game. Now, you can always fulfill an order of your color, but if you want to fulfill an order from a different player, you'll have to first pay them a coin. So it's important to make sure that you have the money and ability to fulfill a given order that's here on the market or available in your tea house. Turns that you take in Chai are incredibly quick and smooth and basically will consist of you doing one of three main actions and then potentially fulfilling an order that is out on the market if you are able to. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about those actions and what it looks like to fulfill an order. As I mentioned, turns and chai move very, very quickly, and you'll have three actions to choose from as you try to fulfill the orders that are here on the, uh, the T order row in front of you. Now, on your turn, we'll play as the blue player here for this illustration, there are three things that you can do. You can go to the market, the pantry, or use a special ability. Let's start here at the market. This is what I mentioned was kind of the candy crush little aspect of the game. It's my favorite uh, part of chai. I think it's incredibly fun. So when you go to the market, the very first thing you'll do is you will collect a, a three gold coin. You'll add it to your reserve. You'll use the money mainly here at the market to buy the flavors and the, the things that you'll need to fulfill orders. Now, when you look here, you'll see that there's lots of different colored tiles that are all representative of various flavors in the game of chai. Lots of orders will need these flavors. For instance, this green order here needs two mint, a lavender, and a vanilla. This is where we'll set out to collect the ingredients that we may need to fulfill orders like that one. Now, when you go here, you'll see that uh, there are lots of different tiles that are connected, uh, and what you're looking to do is you will collect, uh, you'll pay the gold or coin cost equal to the leftmost piece that you're looking to collect, and then you'll collect that tile and every orthogonally connected tile that is the same type. So let me illustrate. Here, if I was to collect these two vanilla pieces, it would cost me one copper coin because it is both, the, the leftmost piece on this section here is in the one section. I could pick one of these tiles and I would collect the other as well because it's orthogonally connected, top down, left, right. Here, if I looked over at this illustration, if I wanted perhaps these two vanilla, I see that they're split. There's one in the silver two section and one in the gold three section. So this would actually cost me three coins just to take these two. Well, that's not very good economy. Let's say I wanted to collect this lavender and some vanilla, and I could chain these actions together to maximize their efficiency. So the first thing I would do is I could pay two coins to collect these three lavender, because again, they're orthogonally connected, and I'd take them, and I would set them over here 
in my player area. There's a limit to how much you can hold. There's 12 uh, flavors that you can hold and six pantry uh, pieces that you can hold at any one time. So I've selected this lavender. I've paid for it. We'd slide these over uh, and now we'd see that now all of these vanilla are connected. That would mean that I can pay again two coins because now they're all in the, the leftmost is in the two section and I could collect all four of these vanilla for two coins. Again, placing them uh, in my spot. Now that would be all four of the coins that I had to spend on this particular round. But if I had additional coinage, I would slide these down and could continue to buy. So for instance, I could buy all four of these mint for two coins if I wanted. Now, these will never refresh until the end of your turn, but you can keep buying in that way until you're done. Now, once you're done, you'll pass and then you'll begin to reslot and refill uh, the area that you selected. So we would go ahead and grab some tiles. We'd see that there, finally, uh, some lemon tiles come out. We hadn't even seen those in the initial setup of the game. So you'll take your collected items, and then again, if you're able to, you can fulfill an order. The next thing you can do is go to the pantry. This one's very simple. You will collect three of the ingredients from the pantry. Now the pantry starts with one of each of the five options that it has out here on the board. So let's say I wanted to collect these three items. Well, I would collect them and store them in my tea house. And then I would refill, and I would see that I could draw three randomly from the bag and refill them. Now we notice that the pantry isn't always going to contain at least one of each of the type of options. So it's really important to strategize when you go to the pantry to make sure that you're getting the types of ingredients that you need. Now, you can always blind draw from the bag, but of course you don't know what you're getting. So you may spend an action getting ingredients that you don't need. Uh, so it's really important to manage this section well. The last thing that you can do is utilize the special abilities that are available in any given round of the game. Now, there are lots of different ability cards that can come up from round to round, and basically, you'll deal three out at the start of the game, and then every round, uh, the player who, whose turn it is will select one of these to go away, and we'll replace it with a new one. But I won't go through all of the abilities, but let's talk a little bit about what they can do. Uh, these abilities are very diverse and, and really affect all kinds of different aspects of the game. So for instance here, I could choose to get rid of a type of ingredient from the board. So say I still didn't really like lemon, I could get rid of lemon from the board and slide this down, I would restock it, and put these back in the bag. This allows you to have a little bit of control, maybe a little bit of a refresh on the market, or perhaps maybe even a little bit of a, a, a spite removal of an ingredient that you think maybe your opponent is trying to get. Say Red was really trying to go for this particular ingredient, you could try to remove all the berries so that he maybe is not able to fulfill that order as easily as he would have been. So you can do things like that to really mess up uh, combos for really big stretches like this mint here, uh, or perhaps just get something cleared out in hopes that you will get something that you need. This just allows you to collect a three gold tip, uh, which is the most valuable tip. So if you're short on money, it's a nice ability. If there's an order, you know you can fulfill this turn. This is one of my favorite abilities in the game. This lets you basically swap ingredients from this sheet with what you have in your set. So here, if I was the blue player and I collected all this vanilla, maybe I didn't need all this vanilla. Well, I can take up to three, but let's say I just want to do one and I could trade it for this wild ingredient here and add that back to my section. Then of course, once you use an ability, you go on to potentially fulfill an order if you're able. So let's talk a little bit about fulfilling orders and how that works. So as we see, there's always going to be a row of, of uh, two plus the number of players in play orders here in the T row. So with this three player game, there's going to be five here available for anyone to fulfill at any time. Again, you don't have to just fulfill orders of your own color, but uh, in doing so, you'll need to pay the person whose color order you are fulfilling a coin to fulfill their order in their place. Now, we can see that the orders vary. There's some that need maybe just ingredients. There are some that need ingredients and lots of flavors and some that just need flavors. And they vary in points from uh, a very low amount to some that can be quite, quite high, depending on the complexity and difficulty of fulfilling that particular order. Now, once you've done an action on your turn, you'll look at the ingredients that you have in your tea house, both flavors and ingredients, and you'll look to see if there's an order that you can fulfill either on the main row or something that you have reserved in your tea house. Now, each player can reserve up to three orders into their tea house. So let's say perhaps I had reserved this person to my tea house. Now, that means that only I can fulfill this red order for the duration of the game. 
no one else can meet it. But it does take up a slot in my tea house. So if I'm unable to fulfill that order, I now have one less slot in my tea house that I can reserve. So you have to be careful about when you reserve orders uh, and when you seek to fulfill them. Now, anytime an order is fulfilled, a new one will come out from the from the draw pile here randomly. So we'll see now that blue has a lot of options. And if other people want to fulfill orders right now, they may have to start paying blue to meet some of his tea house customer orders. Anytime you fulfill a tea order, let's say we had the ingredients to fill this particular order, you would collect those. You'll take a little tea leaf uh, of your player color. You'll take all those items and you'll put them into one of the cups that has a tip symbol remaining beside it for that particular round. You will then collect the tip. So for this case, we would collect a two silver two coin and we would fulfill that order. We would take the card that we fulfilled, we'd place it beside our player area face down, we'll tally those points up at the end of the game. Now, once all three of these orders have been fulfilled, the tips have been collected, we would move to the next round of the game, we would shuffle and draw new tip items, we would leave the uh, ingredients in the cups where they are, and we would continue playing. We do that through five rounds, each with three, in this case, three tips to be fulfilled. So after 15 orders have been fulfilled, the game would end. We would tally our points and see who has the most victory points. They would be the victor in this particular game of Chai. And that is how you play Chai in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed getting to learn a little bit about this awesome game and are excited to check it out uh, and just get your hands on it. The deluxe edition is really fun. It has these nice weighty metal coins that I, I'm just a sucker for metal coins at this point. It's it's getting to be a problem. I might need help, guys. But they just they look great. They have uh, this really awesome imprint on the back of them, and they just add a lot of nice flavor and feel to the game. Uh, as I mentioned, I just love. Uh, the chunky cups here, I think they add a fun feel, but I love the, the candy crush aspect that the market brings and just the strategy that's in the game. And honestly, the way that I would describe Chai to someone who'd not experience it is it's just a warm, fun game. Uh, it has these really nice warm colors on the box and throughout the entirety of the, of the set here. It just feels like a nice, refreshing walk in a park of a game to play. It's fun, it's light, um, and it's really engaging. Now, I've talked to you a little bit about the game, I've talked to you a little bit about how you play, but what did I think of it? Well, as I mentioned, I really like Chai. I'm a big tea fan personally, uh, from, from Bubble Tea to Earl Grey, everything in between. I like tea, so this is an easy sell to me on theme. Uh, I really love just the aspects of strategy uh, and, and kind of mini game almost that are stacked into Chai. I think it's really fun. It's accessible. It's very easy to teach. There's not a high entry point to this game, which I think is a huge plus for it uh, in, in what Dan and Connie have built here uh, with Steeped Games. And so I'm a, I'm a big fan of Chai. Uh, I think that most people would enjoy sitting down to it. Now, as I mentioned, it can be played co-op. It can be played solo, and it can play up to five people, either, again, cooperatively or competitively. I really like the competitive version of this game with some variant rules. As I, I kind of touched on that earlier, but I'll mention it again. Basically, at the end of the game, you would count up the number of tea leaves that are in each cup, and the person who has the most gets a bonus victory point. You also look at anyone who has any remaining orders left in their tea house reserve, and they lose points for those orders. And so that, to me, is nice because... There is a bit of a fun little take that element where you can kind of, as I mentioned, spike draft uh, orders that you think an opponent might fulfill and put them in your tea house just to lock them away so that they can't fulfill those orders. And I like the variant rule kind of punishes you a little bit for that, kind of incentivizes you like, hey, that's cool if you want to kind of spike draft that from your opponent, but you better be able to fulfill it or it's going to hurt you a little bit at the end of the game. And so I like that uh, cost value that you have to analyze there. Uh, everything else in this game is great. It's fun. Um, there's not a great deal of a strategic depth in this game. I will say that it is a light to midweight game, but I love it. There's a little bit of luck in the pantry, a little bit of luck in the market, but you can control that luck. Uh, you can mitigate that luck. There's always a backup plan uh, and there's always a way that you can move forward. The abilities add a lot of fun excitement to the game and I'll just kind of tease it at this point. There is an expansion coming out as well that will add asymmetric powers to your tea house as well as some other fun goodies, I think as well. Uh, so I'm really excited to see the 
depth that that adds to the game. But overall, Chai is a really great, fun game. It's an addition to your game collection that anybody can appreciate and enjoy. Uh, it's good to have as a group. Uh, and if you're a solo gamer, there's some really fun stuff you can jump into here as well. So I think there's just a lot of value for a lot of people uh, when you look at a copy of Chai. Uh, so I would give this game a 7 out of 10. I do think it is a little bit on the light side, so if you're looking for something with deep strategy, uh, Chai is probably not the game for you, but if you are looking just to sit down with some friends and play a nice, honestly, still, I, I always feel this way when I play this game, a nice, relaxing experience of just crafting teas, meeting orders, and yes, there's, there's going to be a winner, there may be some losers, but really it's just a fun experience to get to kind of build through and collect the ingredients you need, uh, and again, this really fun kind of candy crush little system where you're puzzling to maximize your, your collection so that you can fill orders faster than your opponents. And so uh, a really fun game, quality components. It's got game trays in it. It's got awesome uh, little cups and coins and just chunky bits that really make the game pop. Has a nice table presence and a really solid feel. So I think that you will enjoy this game as I enjoyed this game. And so if you're on the fence about Chai, I hope that this review has encouraged you to check it out uh, and give it a whirl and uh, get to brewing some awesome tea. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this review and thank you as always for choosing Meeple Mountain for your review content needs and as always happy gaming. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Check out some of our other Meeple Mountain content. I promise you won't be disappointed. This is Tyler Williams signing off.